Good Tuesday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Glad to come together with you again today to share from God's Word. And the thought for the day goes through the book of Acts, Acts chapter 24. And as I was going through this chapter of the scriptures, we read of Paul now being brought before a man by the name of Felix. He's kind of like a governor today, a man of authority. He is a uh, wicked man who has a wife by the name of Drusilla who he took away from her first husband. Kind of reminds me of King Herod, who in uh, Mark chapter six, verse 20, we are told, love to hear about uh, Christ from John, another wicked man who took his um, own brother's wife away from him. And uh, here we have Felix, just like Herod, had an itchy ear to hear about the word of God, but he wasn't any, anywhere near a true Christian he was a man who uh, would bribe his people crime in Judea at that time was very high but what I got out of this chapter though was in Acts chapter 24 verse 16 the Apostle Paul despite the fact that he's before this man of power said that he had a clear conscience and today I wanted to speak about a con our conscience you know, our conscience is like a red flag that goes up in our mind or the red light that you come to um, when you're driving to tell you to slow down, to stop. But there comes a time when people can sear their consciences. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 tells us that. Little by little, like the frog in the pot of water that gets hotter and hotter, unless you jump out of that pot, eventually you will be fried. There was a man by the name of Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer was a uh, serial killer who was killed in a prison himself in 1994 in Wisconsin. And he killed about 18 people. And he was a serial killer who not only killed his victims, but he would have intimacy with these young men that he would kill. And then he would dismember their bodies. The crime scene was gruesome. Uh, there were brains inside of a freezer. There was a heart on a, on a stove in a pot when the police came to his apartment. And you could say to yourself, how could somebody do these things? Well, I remember listening to his testimony when he was in prison years ago. And he spoke about how the first killing was very, very hard to do. But he said after the first killing, it became easier and easier to kill again and again and again. And that's how the conscience is. The conscience warns you of something that you're doing is wrong. But if you don't listen to it, your conscience can become seared. And you become more and more sinful. Worse and worse before your condition before. The Apostle Paul says this in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19. That many left the faith because they abandoned their conscience and shipwrecked their faith. A little earlier in the chapter, 1 Timothy chapter 1, Paul exonerated, he tried to admonish uh, Timothy of a new commandment, to have a clear conscience. The way we keep our conscience clear is by having our hearts sprinkled, as Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22 tells us, sprinkled by the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's nothing you can do, my friends, that can keep your conscience clear. Many times, like Felix or Herod, as I mentioned before, they will have an itchy ear to hear things about God and his word. They might show outwardly that they, they're uh, uh, interested in God. And these are people that have uh, hearts, I mean, minds that might be alert to the word of God, or they might even profess with their lips the Lord. But remember what Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, said in Matthew chapter 15, verses 8 and 9. In his day many people were coming up to him and he said these people profess me with their lips but their hearts are far from me see my friends the conscience the heart that's what God is looking at and when you have a conscience that's sensitive to sin that's because the Holy Spirit is convicting you John chapter 16 verse 8 reminds us that one of the functions of the Holy Spirit is to convict the world of sin when you have the Holy Spirit within you and you start to look at someone the wrong way or you start to think something wrong about someone, that 
light is going to go off inside of you that this is wrong. You need to respond to that. Confess it to God. If you've offended someone else, confess it to that person. That's what Christ told us in Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 26. Before you go to church or you go to offer a gift or uh, do some worship service for God and you know someone has something against you, go to that person. Confess your faults one to another, as James chapter 5, verse 16 tells us. But ultimately, first and foremost, we should confess our sins to God. When we confess our sins to God, this is pleasing to the Lord. But if we try to conceal our sins, as Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 tells us, we will not prosper. The temptation is when we do something wrong, is try to appease our conscience. We try to smother and cover up our sins. There's nothing new under the sun. As Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9 tells us, there's nothing new under the sun. Our first parents... Adam and Eve did the same thing. When they sinned in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, we read right away the first thing they did in the next two verses, verses 7 and 8, was they tried to cover themselves with fig leaves and hide from the presence of God. And that's what we do with our conscience. We try to smother it. We try to cover it like when there's a fire. I'm in a wooded area not too far from my house. If, if there's a little fire in the grass here, you would take a blanket or something and try to smother it. And that's what we try to do with our conscience. But my friends, your sin will find you out. We are all open and exposed to God. We're naked before him. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 reminds us of that. You see, Christ sees your heart. John chapter 2 verses 24 and 25 reminds us of that. You can't conceal what's going on in your heart from the Lord. Oh, yeah, you can conceal it from people around you, your family members, maybe even church people in church could put on a facade. But God sees your heart. My friends, today, I hope today's devotional video, if anything, will remind us that God has given us a conscience. That's one of the things that separates us from the animal kingdom. Animals do not have a conscience. They act on instinct. People were created in the image of God have this conscience inside of them and as Paul had a clear conscience in his service for God in Acts chapter 24 verse 16 may we too have a clear conscience as you can hear about about a hundred yards from me there's a whole bunch of cars beeping their horn and their consciences are not clear because they're rushing they're impatient trying to get where they got to go but my brothers and sisters may we today have a clear conscience before God. And the only way we can is by avoiding sin, is by staying in the Word of God. John Bunyan, who was born in 1628, he died in 1688 and wrote the book Pilgrim's Progress, once said that sin will keep you from your Bible, or your Bible will keep you from sin. As we read in Psalm 119, verses 9 to 11, how can one keep themselves pure? How can you have a clear conscience? by staying in the Bible, obeying what God tells us, the written word of God, but ultimately the living word of God, Christ himself. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who so see this devotional video today. If anyone has a defiled, seared conscience today about something, may they humble themselves and confess it to you and to others if they need to do so. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all.